everyone. Um, I don't usually look like this. I came from a wedding, so I look very <laughs> extra. Um, I'll be reading from my short story that's going to appear in the anthology that Dan mentioned, and it is um, half memoir, half fiction. And it's called Fragments. Words so often lose their colour in the face of mental illness. An instrument that boasts of being powerful enough to change the world, break up relationships, tear a family apart, seems too feeble to describe the evils of mental illness. How corrosive, debilitating, isolating it is as it consumes you, while still possessing the power to make you blame yourself for what is happening, or resent others for not understanding. Yet speak, she must. Grandpa passed away in April. It would be May by the time they reached China. The only flight that could carry them from Sydney to Shanghai in time for the funeral was the budget airline that imposed a 14-hour transit in a city Fleur had never been to and did not plan to visit again. 0400 arrival in Kuala Lumpur. 1800 a boarding time to Shanghai. Actual limbo. Every trip to China before this trip might have been tiring, but at least Joy had waited on the other end. Year after year, instead of spending Christmas and summer back home in Sydney, they will pack suitcases laden with authentically Australian healthcare products for the older relatives and originally packaged English-speaking DVDs for the younger ones and set off for wintry China, Shanghai. Fleur could not decide if she liked going to Shanghai or not. Part of her said, of course, you love seeing your grandparents, and that was true. But part of her loathed how draining it was Financially, yes, but most of all, physically and emotionally. Especially emotionally. It was always hard to leave. As her grandparents' age increased, every, uni every reunion seemed to herald one less reunion. Any reunion could be the last. How could she have known back in February, telling her grandpa that she would be back by the end of the year <coughs> to see him, that there will be no next time? The tears threatened to burst out like hot water from a brewing kettle again. Fleur quickly rubbed her eyes and put the lid back on before she could erupt. She needed to do something, anything, to distract herself. She dug out a pen and the flight confirmation papers and set off her pen on the empty spaces on the papers. I don't know how we're going to face the funeral. Part of me just wants to cry and shut anyone out. Part of me knows basic courtesy is still required around relatives, regardless of whether they truly care for Grandpa in their hearts or not. I want to support Mum, but I'm, and I'm sure she wants to support me too. We're just both not in the state to do that well. Why did he lie to us? Why make out as if Grandpa's illness was nothing serious, push us up the hill of hope before plunging us to the abyss with the southern news of his death? Why insist that mum shouldn't go back to take care of him and then blow the smoke of guilt in our faces when it was all too late, saying we did nothing to help? If grandpa's condition really was so bad, near, I don't even want to write the D word, why prevent us from seeing him one last time? Why did he not send him to a hospital to receive proper treatment at the earliest time? It wasn't as if he couldn't afford it. It wasn't as if they lived in a remote country town with no access to medical help, it was Shanghai. The more one thinks about it, the more suspicious uncle's conduct becomes, as if he were hiding something from us, taking advantage of the fact that we live all the way in Australia so that he can mask the truth, twist the truth however he wants, knowing full well that he's, own, he's been our only channel of information to Grandpa's health condition. When he didn't reply for days on end, in ignoring every frantic phone call and WeChat message sent by mum, we knew something was off. When mum's old new friends told her that the address led them to a nursing home instead of a proper hospital, and that the carers strongly advised uncle to take grandpa to a proper doctor's for his bleeding situation, mum lost it. What kind of a son says, I'll think about it, to saving his own father's life? We cannot even conceive of that possibility. He wouldn't, couldn't. Ever since the funeral, she had been like an overfilled boiling kettle, ignored for too long on high heat, convinced that the rumbling, tumbling water was energy spurring her on to finish the rest of the semester, she never realised that the lid put on grief was never meant to hold forever. 
much like an overfilled kettle, would never simply whistle and blow steam without eventually spurting out burning water. She had not been stronger than her mother, nor was she indifferent, neither had she been recovering. She had been distracting herself with university, internship, friends, bushwalks, socials, social media, hoping the passing of time would lead her to the cure of all her pain. All the while, her wound boiled infectiously larger. The lid she had put on her grief had been effective enough, but only for so long. It allowed her to function, to smile, to respond to this society that still went on as if nothing had happened, as if nothing had been lost. Only 10 minutes until her fifth psychologist session, as she waits in the sitting room, she imagines the usual, how are you feeling question, and feels for her psychologist and for herself, when the answer would eventually be, my grandma passed away last Thursday, five months after grandpa, back to square one. A double blow, double death in one year. She imagines her smile that is to follow, the sad kind, the I'm trying to look better than I am smile, the I don't even know what I'm doing with my life grimace, the people, I th people think I should be crying but I've dried up on tears chuckle. Everything will seem funny, funnily sad. As for cheap flights to Shanghai flash up on her Facebook news feed, it's September. She imagines she won't be missing yet another Australian summer for the coldness of China for a very long time to come. Thank you.